Right, and we are back. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Between Two Fans. We can officially start with the name, which is always a good start. And uh, we are joined with your host, the one fan, Steve P, the other fan, Mr. Dan Scold. Dan, how are you? I'm I'm phenomenal, Stevie. It's um, feels this morning will actually might have slowed down for a second, but there's still a hell of a lot to cover. Um, so I, I'm I'm as happy as ever. Yeah. No, the nice thing is we're we're now kind of into that season where like it's hectic, but because it's more like it's sort of stuff happening every day now as well. It's not just necessarily like one like Super Saturday, Super Sunday. It's 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 just sport everywhere at the moment. And if you're a Formula One fan, for example, that's also about to start happening. So things are about to start ramping up. Coming up in the show tonight, however, we'll be discussing a lot of rugby. We had the URC back this past weekend. We had a Springbok squad or an alignment camp group, if you want to be very specific, come out. Um, we also got Six Nations back this coming weekend. Uh, we're going to be talking about some cricket. We're going to be talking about baseball and uh, whether England can uh, stage a comeback against India in the next test, which starts on Friday. We're talking about the Proteas test loss against New Zealand, uh, which uh, some of us did predict on and what it means going forward. And then we're going to wrap up the show with a bit of Premier League. Uh, Manchester City kicking off in like half an hour, actually. Um, so uh, we're interested to see how that goes. Dan, as a Liverpool fan, uh, is uh, obviously going to watch that with quite a, uh, a keen eye, given the fact that they did falter this last uh, weekend. But anyway, we are going to get straight into it. Dan, should we talk a bit about some rugby? And uh, the fact Let's... that... Uh, well, the Steve, US you're jumping was... ahead, you're jumping ahead. You're jumping ahead. You're jumping uh, you're ahead. To We've the... got our predictions from last yeah, but, week. But, yeah, my, my don't guts, try don't think and scoot I... past yeah, this. I don't, don't think I've done very well here. <laughs> so if, if, you, if you're new around here, every, every week Steve and I are predicting three different um, predictions of, of sports games. Um, and whoever um, gets more of the predictions right gets a, I guess, weekly point. Stevie is up 2-0. Um to be fair. So, so I, I needed to stage a bit of a comeback and let's see how that went. First off was the, the Proteas um, versus New Zealand game. As um, you would know, the, the Proteas went on to lose that by seven wickets um, yeah. with Kane Wilson being man of the match. Um, no, not man of the match. Will O'Rourke was man of the match, but Kane Winnison player of the series, showing his class. We'll get into the game specifics, but our predictions were... Stevie went for the draw, which, to be fair, looked looked on the cards at a point, and I said a, um, a losing margin by 150. I don't know why I went for runs when um, we batted first, but we move. Um, and you've seen a one... <laughs> By seven wickets. So I'm going to say 150 runs is closer to seven wickets than a draw is, Stevie. So I'm going to take that one um, yeah. because at least ha I had, had the loss. Um, I, I did like the draw prediction. I, I felt pretty safe going into day five because it was either going to be a, a win or loss. But flip to, or was it day four, the final day? It was. Uh, it was no, day four. Day five. Get to day five. No, yeah, so it was, we, we, we crumbled. Oh, That's the problem. Day. Yeah, um, a draw, a draw. You needed some rain there. Um, but anyway, so one 0 to me. Premier League. We went um, for City versus Chelsea. The result was one one. Um, Chelsea breaking the City winning run um, of I think fourteen games, I believe, um, leaving um, them with a couple fewer points that than they would have liked, but rescue on rescuing one at the end. Stevie, your prediction was four 0 Minus three one, and I'm gonna go ahead and give myself another point yeah, there because I think I'm a little bit closer. <laughs> I mean, what are we the, gonna we both do? Got the result wrong. <laughs> yeah, but who was the closer of the two? Yeah, there I can mean, only be one. Yeah, that's that's ballsy, ballsy, ballsy. ballsy. <laughs> well, if 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 you want to leave that one, you can leave that one because then we'll get into the Lions versus Bulls. Bulls going on to win that game, twenty five points to ten. Steve, your prediction was Lions by five, mine was Bulls by four. So in which case I got all, um, well, I got two of the three predictions, right? Unfortunately, my good sir, you got none of them. So it's 2-1. So 2-1, eh? And I'm finally on the scoreboard. No, okay, no, longer, so... no longer the donut. Um, 
but yeah, stay tuned for um, our next week's prediction at the end of this episode. We'll be covering the um, Arsenal versus Newcastle game, the India versus England fourth test, as well as the Calcutta Cup Scotland versus England. Stevie, let's chat rugby. Yeah, interesting weekend. Uh, URC back, uh, two local derbies. Uh, um, before we even talk about the match, we talk about the crowds. 25,000 people Phenomenal. at uh, Emirates Airline Park, and I think about 30,000 or something along those lines at, uh, at at Kings Park. So another weekend of uh, almost, you know, almost you know, 25, 30,000 fans in stadiums, and especially for Airs Park, it's very impressive. The fans are back in stadiums so in a big way. Rugby is alive and well down here, isn't yeah. it? All they had to do was offer the students free beer, and then the whole of uh, Jobo went to went to the um, game or the hole. But you know, about ten times more than they they mm, come to expect. Um, but hopefully, that, hopefully it means because it seems to be the you know, I guess the shock to extent. But the Lions seem to be the last of the you know clubs that haven't really been able to galvanize the fan base. But mm. now that I guess fixtures are starting to. Um, you know, change up. I hope the fans come back. And they're playing decent rugby as well, which does help. You know, you're not you're not going there just to watch them getting help. absolutely mauled every single yeah. time. They're actually semi competitive at the moment, which yeah. makes for a nice change. But uh, in terms of the actual match, not the greatest match from uh, the Lions. Not sure I appreciate Jake White the comments he made about the Lions and basically inferring the Lions don't play any rugby, we're not particularly dangerous, and then went back to the last game and said, well, you know, you take away the you know, moment of individual brilliance from Sine and Nahamba and, you know, this counterattack try and this moment, and they're not that great. And you're going, okay, Jake, so you take away the good rugby and there wasn't any good rugby. Like, <laughs> you know, they, they they got their first try off a moment of brilliance from Ambrose appear. So that's fine. That's nice attacking rugby. But as soon as Nahamba does it, that's just a, a free moment. But um, anyway, a frustrating day I thought for the Lions. Now, don't, yeah. don't, don't even I tell me down on, on, on Jay Quiet. Every single time I start to think, yeah, no, maybe he's just mellowed a bit. Jay he just Quiet, comes back with some clangers. Yeah, he, he's. I think he's just. You know, the. I think when people get over, they just speak their mind a bit more, and they, he wants to say what he wants to say. And he doesn't really care anymore. Um, which, on one hand, is quite funny, but he can come across as a bit grumpy nowadays. But I mean. Springbok rugby is better for having him in the system. I still, I still love him. He's a Springbok winning coach. But yeah, no, a great game. Um, tries from Kanan Moody, Akafana Mava, Marcel Kutsia, um, and David Creel with an absolute superhero dive over um, your boy. Um, yeah, Jason Vitoria has, has, um, has been watching that back for a while now and just and not, not enjoying what he's seeing. Oh, it, I mean... Uh, to be fair, when I saw it was him and Embrose Papier, I kind of thought Embrose Papier would be the one to get there with his pace. But cheapest did he do well to get just up for those who didn't see it. Chip and chase, got to defend it, ushering the ball back over the line, waiting to dot it down. He just superhero dives over his shoulder, grabs the ball, dots it down. Um, unreal. And then a, a single try from um, Kieran Horn. Um, and yeah, ending 10 points to 25. Yeah, I don't think a scoreline that necessarily affects the game. I thought that, I mean, the Lions had that try just allowed early in the second half. And uh, I thought both teams were one try away from actually being able to kick onto a bit of into second gear. And I think if that Lions try had stood, I think they could have gone on to, to build a bit of momentum. Um, and similarly, I think the fact that it was ruled out and then the Bulls short, scored shortly after, that I think was just had such a big I mean, swing. it was very low scoring for most of the match. Yeah. For most no, of the match, they were... You take away. Oh, no, it was. It was. Never, I don't think okay, it was a good blowout. Um, and, and I said, I think that David Creel try at the end was a bit of a, yeah. I mean, pretty sloppy at the end. And, and you don't concede that try, and it finishes. You know, sort of what twenty points to ten or eighteen points to ten, and it's yeah, relatively, relatively low scoring. But uh, yeah, I was frustrated at the Lions. I mean, I do think that they were a bit conservative at times. And I think. Um, Frustrating. So I would like to have seen them throw a bit more caution to the wind and and, and try have a go. Um, I don't think they're miles behind this bull side, and I think that they. I generally still believe that they can beat this 
um, this Bulls side. I think that they're the player for player. I think they're starting to feel that they can contend with the player in, uh, in front of them. I think that's the main thing. You know, you no longer have that sort of imposter mm-hmm. syndrome where you look up at the player opposite you and feel that there's this massive gulf of quality. We'll talk about the Springbok squad, but I think then being in those alignment camps will also sit the thinking, well, actually, cool. I could also be a Springbok. You know, I'm playing against World Cup winners, but I'm also being seen as a future Springbok. Therefore, you know, I'm in the same sort yeah. of quality as, as these guys. So hopefully that will give a lot of confidence to... Uh, was a pretty strong lines contingent in that uh, in that box squad, but um, your boys looked uh, looked looked uh, pretty 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 good this weekend. Uh, Sharks similarly looked pretty tame, to be honest. Um, they continue yeah. to just look like a very average rugby side. Yeah, ending twenty five point storm is twenty one sharks. I mean, a couple um, a late try by. Um, Bongi Bunambi, but three tries apiece. Um, Dweba rounding a Pelele Fassi on that the was outside. That was phenomenal. A little, uh, little shimmy as well. Dude, that uh, killed me. <laughs> oh, it was so good. It was so, so and, well, I mean, even if you're unfed, I don't think Fassi was stop, stopping him, There's no fair. chance Fassi was ever stopping Joseph far. Dweba. Like, Joseph Dweba at full Absolute, force. Like definition of a cannonball. Yeah, no, so you're saying? There's, no, but there's one thing that is, if, is you know, we all know Joe Stuever has struggled lineup wise, but if there's one thing that you cannot pay me enough to do is to try and tackle Joe Stuever at full full flight because he is an absolute monster oh. with ball in hand. So yeah, I don't think he needed like, to step has some gas as well. No, he's not slow. Yeah, so no, I think no, maybe, no, maybe that was just a bit of a flex to the box coaches to say, hey, I'm not just I'm not just a, a physical presence. I've got a bit of a bit of gas, got a bit of a bit of a bit, bit of a step here. You know, I can draw around the park. Yeah. No, I love that from him. Then a second try um, from Paul De Vette, a lovely little chip and chase um, from Warren Gelant, then offload to De Vette, who goes under. Ben Loder also going down in the corner. Mm. And then the three tries from the Sharks being um, Oxen Chair, um, Fenton, and um, good old Bonks um, crashing over. So, um, I mean, great. Also, kicking from Gomezulu, unreal. Mm. To be fair, yeah, he's a good absolutely kicker. slotting them from distance from the corner. That's the one thing that that man has got. Um, but excited. I mean, the Stormers, it was a very different team. You know, think of a center young partnership. Side. Very young side. Um, Gomezulu and Hartenberg at 12 13. Not to mention, you know, that's, Matea, that's a hell of a test for them. Yeah. I mean, he was playing for uh, a couple of years. It was ago. a very. Yeah. Yeah. He's a Staley's boy, no? Yeah, literally, guys. So I was doing the Varsity Cup watch along last night, and uh, they've signed John Mostert from the Bulls. Um, and they were saying, you know, what well, they had to they had to find a new fly half because Yuri Matias is now contracted with the, with the province. So it goes to show you, a year ago, he was playing Varsity Cup. A year later, he's playing URC. So the Varsity Cup continues to be a genuine pipeline straight into the top levels of, of oh. professional rugby. It's so good. I mean, uh, it's probably the equivalent of um, what what's below the Curry Cup, but... Um, it's like kind of the premiership division there. Like yeah, that, I mean, that's I, kind I, of, I'm sure they can compete. Maybe not always physically, but I mean, the amount of players that go through there, mm. I think what's great about it is that it's not seen like knowing that even if you don't get a coming out of school, get a club contract, yeah, it's asked you. fully like within your reach to go go on and still become yeah. a professional by going to a university a that plays, um, in the varsity club. Yeah, you know, he Literally. is. He is one Literally. of the. He is probably the biggest success story. You know, just wasn't a big rugby player. Played at Rays Rugby. UJ said, "Come start training with us." Yeah. Played a couple of Varsity Cup games. Suddenly, played, nice. lighting up the things. Lions say, "Well, let's give it a chance." Two years later, he's the breakthrough player of the in the world. Three years later, he's banned. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not, not such a pretty ending. <laughs> yeah, but, so he's back. Uh, Although, and had, I, yeah, and and had a couple of nice moments this weekend. I will tell you what, though. I feel I feel vindicated, and I think half the world, half the country feels vindicated because Sharks have gone with Kern Bosch week in, week out, week in, week out, week in, week out. Sian Masuka was signed from the Cheetahs after having a phenomenal season, has not played a single minute. Yes. This past weekend played, what, I think 20 minutes of that, and the Sharks looked a different side with him on the field. And I don't understand how a brains trust like the Sharks have taken, <laughs> what are we, five months into the season to give this guy a go. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, they, it's such a clear place that they need to focus on. Like, I think Bosch can, you know, do a job on the fringes. I think, 
you know, he's kind of been figured out, I feel. Like, I'm surprised that he's still playing so much rugby in South Africa. He almost just doesn't suit the South African game. You know, he could go lots of places around the world and be very um, successful, mm. I think, at club competition. But in South Africa, it really doesn't suit him. And, like, obviously, he's got an amazing boot. But Masuka, like, excite, as you said, the talent that he showed in that Cheetahs jersey. And then you go and sign him thinking, okay, they're making an effort mm. to, you know, taking a risk on this guy to come into the 10 jersey and then go with the repeated process. And it's clear. I mean, I think one of the biggest downfalls, and we can, you know, chat about their potential um, incoming signings in Trevor, um, Nakane, and Andre Estes in next season. But there just seems this massive gulf between the world-class players and their mm. other players, and they just continue to stick with them. I think the frustrating thing is, I think, I mean, I think for ability wise, you know, I look at those non World Cup players for, I mean, the non Springbok players, and you, these are all players they've signed for other unions where they've done really, really well. Um, and they've now gone to the Sharks and they just can't emulate that kind of level. Um, so, for whatever reason, but I just, for me, it's been such a disaster season that what had, what did they have to lose by saying in January or in December, well, listen, we, let's give this kid a run. You know, even in even the Challenge Cup, you know, when they're playing against, you know, the power under 13s, they didn't decide, oh, you know, what's what have we got to lose? Let's give him some even some minutes off the bench. He yeah. just has, I mean, he made his he literally made his debut this past weekend. I get the press releases every week. He's been available. He's not been injured, unless they just decide to leave him out of the, yeah. the, the press releases because they always release the injured players and he was never there. So he's been available. They just haven't played yeah. him. And you cannot understand I just can't understand yeah. why you wouldn't just try it at some point. Yeah. I hope yeah, I mean, this the, the, yeah, I think I think there's a lack of there's a general lack of identity at the Sharks. I mean, if you mm. look at the games, played ten, lost nine, um, won one, and but six losing points. So that and the, their um, points difference is actually they're sitting in sixteenth, but based on points difference, they would be twelfth. Right, which means that they're not losing by a lot. They're just not getting yeah. over the line, and it shows that that's in the quality of players that they have. They're not, they're not, they're not as bad as the Dragons or, the, or even the Scarlets or Zebra. They're they a top eight, you know, they they're top be squad at the, the very teams. least. They compete with everyone, but they just haven't got it to get over the line. So mm. I mean, they're kind of waiting for things to click into gear. They're needing, you know, I think we saw. I, I felt almost like Stormers could have gone in that direction when there was the move over to the new stadium from Newlands and there was a bit of an identity crisis and a lot of financial mm. issues, Dobber was kind of the person that instilled yeah. that identity within the team and got them to believe in largely a bunch of no ones. I mean, we saw what happened to Money Libo when he went a bit of No ones and, and rejects. I think that's I think that's the main thing. Warwick Halant, Money Libok, Hachiba Diamani, three players who were who mm. were, you know, surplus to requirements of the unions. And those have been three of their yeah. best players in the past three seasons. Yeah. You know, uh, and on a word of Warwick he finally looked like the Warwick Halant we saw before he went to France this past weekend. You know, his best, best game for yeah, me this I season. Mean, not, yeah, I mean, I don't think it takes too much, but he's he, he's stopped realizing that he doesn't have to, you know, grubber and dummy every single time. You yeah. know, I think when he keeps that as the kind of in the, like in his back pocket, um, and doesn't reveal it all the time. Uh, he's so mega talented that Oak. Um, yeah. So when he does whip it out, I mean, you could have bet your life that he was going to cross kick that one, just a little dink over the top. Mm. Like no one really saw that coming from his position. Um, but yeah, he, he he's been really great. But yeah, I mean, really, really horrible season they're shaping up to if you're a Sharks fan. No, it's a disaster season. I mean, they're not making the, the Champions Cup unless they win the Challenge Cup. I've, I've done videos where I've said basically that's their only, that's their chance. You know, they they don't go and yeah. and win the Challenge Cup. Or just, they could, from a playing personnel point of view, you know, they could. Um, but yeah, so no, they're not losing to... by a lot of points. No, and it's the Challenge Cup. So, you points. know, you, 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 yeah, it's going to be a tough run. But, they, you know, you look at the quality of teams, and obviously a lot of teams are now dropped down from, from the Champions Cup because uh, so that's what's going to make this a bit more uh, uh, difficult because you've got some quality sides that have dropped down. You know, Edinburgh, for example, is there. Uh, Gloucester has now come down. Um, there are some... Uh, there's, there's some good sides that uh, are, are, are going to be in the next round. Um, you've got a Montpellier, for example, Ulster. 
Um, I think Sail Sharks and I'll, I'll come down as well. So there are some good sides uh, that you have to try and beat. But but at the end of the day, I keep saying this, the Sharks project is a Champions of Europe project. So, I mean, this is the equivalent of like Europa League. This is the type of competition. Yeah they see themselves being able to win. That's the whole point of the kind of the project and, and, and you know, what they're trying to accomplish. Um, and what I think the uh, the owner of the Sharks, Marco Mazzotti, needs to spend more time doing than being on Twitter calling out refereeing decisions, uh, which he did earlier today. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you've not, not seen it, with the uh, yeah, basically say post. So you URC posted the the video of uh, Warwick Land's trial, which, by the way, as most people are saying, the real crime is the fact that you allowed Warwick Land like four years worth of time to look up and decide what yeah. he wants to do. Um, yeah. But he chipped and chased and uh, then gave an inside ball to Paul mm-hmm. DeVette. And if you look at the replay, it looks like Paul DeVette is, in fact, advancing uh, whilst before being played on side. And this is what Marco Mazzotti uh, basically flagged. And he has been basically torn apart for it. Um, basically, people saying, you know, regardless of whether you've got a point or not, it's first of all, it's a really bad look for the owner of a side to be, you know, complaining about the referee and stuff like that. Um, and he actually doubled down and, and, and had to go and uh, basically put out a whole long tweet saying that, you know, the referees are referees and yada, 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 and they get decisions wrong. Um, but, you know, maybe this is how things can change and stuff. But I mean, just it's a classic, it's a classic version. It's like you, you got to, you can't start speaking about the stuff when you are one from 10. Yeah, you know what I mean. So this is the thing. This you know, the, the, you've got you have got. There are greater powers at play. Yeah. Now you've got you've got such a disaster. And how many wars have you? Yeah, you've got on your hands. You have a failed project. Right now, it is a failed project. You know, there and is you're looking nothing. at like a fringe decision. Yeah. Looking at a fringe decision, um, it's like okay, the heat's on me. How do I deflect? And yeah. he just thinks the referee. But yeah, no, n- not a good look um, for him. But you, Stevie, let's get into something very exciting. Springbok mm. um, squad camp. announcement. Well, not, not squad announcement, alignment yes. camp. Sorry, yeah. alignment camp. It's very important First to get the terminology right. Before yeah. we get in, yeah, I think some um, notable exclusions. Let's start with Dion Ferri, the um, only um, World Cup winner, essentially, to be left out. Um, is it the end of his career? Is that what is that what his exclusion is? Um, you'd assume so. Yeah. So the main thing is an alignment squad. So you know, a lot of people are now sort of assuming that these are basically like this is you know the the, the next bunch of spring blocks. And if you're not part of the squad, you can't be a block, which is not the case. We've seen players be included in the real squads after not being part of alignment camps um, and and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, this is a squad of players who, who've gone down to have an alignment camp and to and to basically be told what it, what it means to be a Springbok, what the culture is, you know, what you need to do, what your mm-hmm. expectations are, and stuff like that, and what the plan is going to be for the next however many years. You know, these camps used to happen two, three times before the first camp. There used to be uh, sessions held overseas. That's what Felix Jones used to do. He used to hold sort of similar camps and, and online camps with overseas-based players. So the whole point of alignment is to basically say, right, this is the pathway for the box, and this is how you're going to fit into it if you want to be part of it. So whilst yeah. it technically it doesn't mean that Dion Free is not involved, I don't see why he wouldn't be, he'd be left out if there was plans to use him again. Um, my gut says yeah. this is the end for him. I, I personally think it. it it's a, I, I, I think why come back? You know, yeah. you you were the oldest spring of all yeah, time. What a way to go out! Yeah, you and you, you ended up what captaining them out. in the final minutes in the World Cup final. He after seven eight minutes he, at hooker. What, what, what minute did he come on? What, seven, what, what minute, minute did he come on in the final? He did see seventy. Like second second minute. minute of a World Cup final goes on to not only win the game but ends as captain. Yeah. Like and wins the wins the World Cup with the Springboks. He's like what? He's turning thirty seven this year. You know, I don't it, think we take him forty year old. It is the rugby fairy tale um, like of all time. You know, it's up yeah. there with Donald no, coming it, like, from a fishing trip and winning the, the World Cup for New Zealand. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. So, <laughs> true with the with the triple XS shirt. Yeah, um, you know. But I think I think I mean, we saw last, last season essentially in World Cup year. We're not giving out debuts, but I mean, there was only one debut giving out last in 2023 and that was Jean Klein 
other yeah. than that, every single person had at least had a cap beforehand. Mm. So what they, I think, particularly for this Portugal game, I think it's highly likely that um, there are at least five of these players, uncapped players, who mm. um, will get given a shot. Um, and and you controversially know, some mentions. Yeah. Sasha Feinberg Gomez is English qualified. Are we going to do that yeah, classic and, have a cap? And yeah, I think I mean we saw him included two seasons ago. He's barely I don't he doesn't make the I think the best Stormer side at the moment. I don't think he makes the best Stormer twenty three, by the way. Not just the fifteen. He doesn't make the best Stormer twenty three. That's that's tough. Ahead of no, who? I, I, ahead I of who? who ahead of who? You as a utility back, bro. You can play 10, 15, 12. Yeah. They you go played wing in the, in the winning URC season. Kicks at 60 meters. Let's not digress. Okay, but so, you, so, so Dan, the, the point make is, is that... <laughs> hey? So you, as I say, for me, it's Dan. John, Dan Duplessis, you've got, you got to put that Dan Duplessis back into that squad. We run now back into that squad. Yeah, he is quite a team. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's of, not the yeah, conversation. I think the, the, the point is, is that he's not he's not winning... <laughs> Okay, take him versus Hachiva Daimani. Yeah. He is winning Man and Master Wars Daimani. Yeah. He's won, I think, three this season, two if not three, um, versus Ngomizulu, who is been on and off playing. Mm. But we saw Ngomizulu already included in a camp previously. Even the likes of Salem and Hartenberg hasn't been starting a lot, also included in this camp. Um, I think it's just a very long term goal. I think mm. both of them aren't at a point, nearly at a point where they can um, play Springbok rugby. Um, I don't think they they haven't matured yet physically as well. Yeah. They're both very young, like 21, 22 um, years old. You know, they are like learning their craft at the Stormers in a very creative environment, which is ideal. But I think, as you say, I think it's just about, I don't, I don't think they'll give them a cap personally. I'll be surprised. Surprised they do. Maybe if they are genuinely worried about the England threat, then they will. But I don't see him going to going to England. Like, surely not. Well, like so that, there was a rumor that know, we were talking about in the outcast. group. Yeah, so the rumor on the, on the group was that apparently he's not particularly happy with the Stormers because he feels he needs game time. He feels that he's, at, you know, he's he's been around for, because he made his debut about two seasons ago now so he's into his third season and i remember interviewing yeah. him and he said very much you know he wants to learn his he wants to learn his keep he wants uh, this before last season so he season before last yeah so last so this was 2022 end of 2022 when i interviewed him and spoke to him and he said it was very much you know he wants to learn and he wants to learn from him Libok and uh and the villain said i'd love to play with them and learn from these guys but fast forward we're now you know it'll be two years later in in sort of the off season now and i think he now feels that apparently well, apparently now feels that he's you know, you're not at a situation stage of his career where he needs to be starting. And he's not wrong, actually. He's now 23, sort of, I think he's 22 or 23 this year. He needs to be playing quite regularly. And, you know, he's also not playing a lot of 10, which is, you know, where he wants to play. So, um, yeah, I'd be very interested to see if he is looking to move, you know, where does he look at? Does he, and, and, and I think that, you know, there, there could be that sort of option. You know, if a premiership side suddenly goes and says, well, we'll take you, then maybe that England prospect does come onto the line. I, I I don't think players generally I don't think South Africa players never dream that none of them dream of playing for another country. Um, yeah. you know, Ron Ackerman, for example, who has actually signed a stand on the Gloucester, he was, you know, quite adamant about the fact he wanted to play for the box. Uh, you know, Jean Clay, it was a dream come true to be able to come back and play for the box. Yes. Um so I'd be very surprised if it happens, but I'll be very interested to see what happens in the next six months because I think he is at a point where he needs to decide is he gonna be a bit part player for the Stormers or or can he can he dislodge a Leibok at 10? You know, can he dislodge a Dan Dubisi and a Willemser at 12 or, or whatever? Yeah. I mean, it's always tough for, for fly-offs. We've seen him play mostly fly-off and a bit of 12. Um, and, you you know, it's a classic. There's only he, he needs to figure out a bit like Damien Willemser. We didn't know mm. his best position. He made 15 his position. And he can play 10. He can play 12. If need I be. love my but he made for the mm. position. But the, I think the point is that Gomezulu needs to, I think, also kind of grow that identity. And I think what what um Bilimsa was afforded at the at the Stormers was to play in all those different positions mm. with a little he with was at, a, at a level that 
And I think that's the main he, thing. He, he was playing. Broke. He was playing. But, mm. I mean, I think he's still young, bro. I, I think he's still got time. I, I, I feel like leaving now, you, I don't see a that many pros. I, don't, I mean... The problem is, if yeah, a Lions, for example, a Lions go to him and say, you will be our starting 10, basically. You know, does he go, then, mm, 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 this is now a chance for me, or, or a Sharks go and says, you know, we'll make you our starting 10, basically. And, yeah. and the Stormers can't give him those sort of guarantees. Um, I don't think he will leave, but uh, it will be an interesting prospect. Yeah. Uh, and, and to be fair, I almost want to start seeing these kind of conversations because I feel that... I would love to see rugby become a bit more like football when it comes to like transfers and stuff like that. And and, and that's why the Sharks thing, whilst it's not worked, has been quite fun in watching these mega transfers, these mega moves. Mm-hmm. And and I, I yeah. want to see more of it. I always say, you know, if there, if there was one rule you could change, one thing about rugby in the world, you could, what could you change? Mine would be a, a rugby transfer season, like a window. Right. You know, like, like yeah. football. Uh, the, I, want, the, I want deadline day signings. I want Oaks fighting out for players and stuff like that. Cause I think that yeah. um, in the professional area, I think that we could be seeing some really cool, interesting moves. Uh, and I'd like to see more even, of them. Even Im- imagine a, imagine a, a varsity cup auction. How good would that be for the, yeah. fo- for the following season? I get like, awkward when the, when the guy that's doing like Vitz med gets sent to a varsity, doesn't have medicine, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Can you imagine? You um, imagine different meds you get sent down to rows. Like, well, the best we've got is pharmacy. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, I don't think anyone pursuing a rugby career will go to Rhodes. Um, but I think another massive in- inclusion, Stevie, Manus van der Merwe from the Cheetahs. Mm. I'm really excited. Um, most importantly, because I think it tells other Cheetahs players yeah. that you don't have to do your franchise to make a Springbok squad. Yeah. And to Although, be noted, honestly, and to I do think being what? I think that this means he goes to a franchise next season. <laughs> he will. Um, he will. He, you know, will and as, as the Lions, who for me have got no hookers, I think he'll be looking and going, right, well, there it is. But uh, I think it's important. You know, I always keep saying, you know, we need to get our the same as the Pumas, you know, the Pumas need to be a genuine option for you to go and have a rugby career at and not be like a forgotten player. You know, we're seeing Devin Williams come from the Pumas to the Bulls, be absolutely in ridiculous, get in our full-time contract at 31 years old, at 31 years old, he's now yeah. become a, yeah. a mainstay player in a franchise team. Um, but there are so many good players that, um, that, that, that are around the country and, and you need the cheaters to be a, a, a powerhouse, but you need it to be a genuine pipeline into the box. On a side note, and I think that's something I think we'd like to, I'd like to get into a bit more depth next week because I wanted a bit of a research about it. Burland signing, stealing Harvey's free from the cheaters is a wild move. A non Curry Cup first division side, premiership division side, taking a EPCR coach from them yeah is unreal and uh, skulk burger is involved in that in that in that bull and um board and there's some very other interesting directors on there so i think that's something we have to pencil in for next week i'll be very interested to see what's the plan for bull and rugby down there and, and I, I believe that there's a Matsepe and johan rupert uh funding involved as well so it'll be very interesting to see oh, what really? the plans are for bull and rugby wow okay that i mean that could be crazy i, I mean to, to add on to kind of, you know, while we're on crazy ideas for rugby, not crazy, but this should also be a thing. Bring back the relegation battle. Remember when the Lions and Kings had to play okay, each no. other for a spot in Super Rugby? I think the cheaters are being criminally disrespected by being kept down and out of URC. They, yeah. time replaced, after time... They replaced, replaced the Sharks, eh? We're all in agreement. Well... <laughs> replace someone, whoever comes last. I think there has to be some sort of jeopardy in this. Genuinely, yeah. otherwise, otherwise, what like what do you what is free uh, cheetahs franchise meant to aspire to? You know, just be a um, you know a pipeline um, driver for for the rest yeah. of the uh, yeah. South Africa it's the, the Lions Academy. No, you see, uh, uh, <laughs> for, imagine the Greek was hosting a URC game, hosting <laughs> Leinster. <laughs> like, Greek that's what I want to see. At, at, I want to see... At, in Kimberley, dude. I want to see... Yeah, I want to see them in, in Kimberley. Just been took plastered everywhere and, um, you know, 
just just touch furlong um looking like he just wants to can get you, out of there so you, can, can you can you imagine them when that the first time they get tackled onto Hrikwa park and they're basically playing they, on concrete. they've never experienced ground that hard in their life no or heat um, like that no but some some more before we move on from from the spring rocks um I think some other interesting call-ups. I mean, we're looking at the at the Lucys. We got um, Pilon Gomere, Cameron Hanukom from the Bulls. Um, I mean, they've had a really, really good season. Ruben van Heeren from from the Stormers. He's obviously, um, you know, him and Salman Murat both mm-hmm. from the Stormers. Salman just coming back um, from injury. Um, Rob La, Needling for Cher. Um, apparently, just being called up for his personality. I personally think he's a phenomenal scrummer. Um, <laughs> But you know, Andre, yeah, Andre Hugo Fenter is an interesting one. Yeah, yeah, Andre Hugo exactly. Fenter for me, I I think he's talented. I think he's going to be a good player. I think he's about the third, maybe fourth best hooker at the Stormers. Um, because I think with Jay, when JJ Cox is fit, I think that he's he's ahead of um, Andre Hugo Fenter. And 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 as much as I understand that Dwebers had his, his, his issues, I think Dwebers actually been playing quite well this season and would almost be more worthy of being part of the box clans now than he has in the last couple of years um but it's a bold shot to basically imply that uh, he's being uh, picked because he might be he's marrying russ's daughter <laughs> but, <laughs> but all i'm saying is it can't help eh? it can't it can't hurt but, to have yeah so listen uh father no. do you watch my game and what's this chat what am i doing wrong what am i doing right if i were to be what? a springbok hooker what would my performance be look like yeah, what do I, what do I need to do, coach? What do I need to do? That must Dad. be a horrendous oh, sorry, Christmas sorry, lunch. Sorry. Like you're there, young player, oh. trying to make the box squad. You've got the master of SA rugby, you know, five beers deep, a couple of brandies in, you know, sitting opposite you. You've just bought him a shitty Christmas present, and now you're sitting there going, <laughs> "Shit, how am I going to play for this guy in the, in the next four years?" <laughs> yeah, to be fair, it's a lose lose for them both if they like oh. Like I mean, I think he's insane. I agreed again. He, like a lot, of, a lot of these players actually haven't been performing mm. at club level, which is super interesting. Even like Jordan Hendricks, he's been eating bench. Yeah. But a part of the. But that's why um, you, you, you can clearly the see the form players, like a Nitli for sure, but older form player, Ruben van Heerden, form player yeah. versus. Yeah. This is a player we when we we know they've got springbok potential and this is how we want to try and get them to become springbok so i think in andrew hugo fenter hits that 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 bill your hartsenberg's hendrix's uh you know family robin zulu your your ruan fenters for example Jan, yeah. Jan hendrick vessels you know there's no way Jan hendrick vessels is benching any of our hookers or any of our loose head props yeah regardless of where you yeah. see him as a player. But he's not ahead of Marks, Imanambi, Jan Krabala, yeah. you know, probably even even a potentially minus from the Merva. You know, yeah, he, yeah. and he's definitely not benching any of the props. But he's a freak of nature and right, cool. In two, three years' time, how do we get him to become international ready? Last last point before we move on. Where does Sonero Nahambas fit in to the spring box? Wherever you want him. Do you want him to come <laughs> off the bench? Do you want him? He's the answer to to the the eight nil split. Yeah, eight nil split. The the the. the, the <laughs> you do a young seven I mean, one. I, he's obviously, he has, he's been insane at ten and left the Sharks. Probably one of the best moves for himself mm. and the Lions that could have happened. Got dropped because of. Um, Grant Williams and, and Hendricks, uh, the Sharks, and Cameron and Wright, nine, and, and Cameron Wright, <laughs> lest we forget, but goes there as a nine, then becomes a ten because their their star started ten is yeah. a couple of injuries and not really playing well. Kind of kept Ken- Hendricks on the bench, becomes a goal kicker. Who knew? Um, and just you know what one of the one of the brave character bravest characters but do you think he's there in the nine jersey or the ten jersey well do you think it's both do you think it's the classic springbok scenario where it's a utility player literally i mean you look at a seven one for example and they said that you know seven one you ideally want to scrum half you know there's there's worse things than having a scrum off that can play a 10 if you wanted him the funny thing is this is not the first time he's been part of an alignment squad he they he was actually in that uh, springbok gold versus in 2020 Mm, yeah, after COVID. So four years mm-hmm. later, you know, he went back to the Sharks and couldn't get a game, gone to the Lions, been in red hot form. So Rusty has seen something even before. And, and, and to be fair, 
But one thing about this coaching staff is that, and this is why I, I still like, I don't back the, the idea that Diamani doesn't fit the system because coaching staff have got a, a player mold. They want a player that can fit this, but they love a player with a party trick. They love a player that's got yes. that one little thing that they can do that's that's quite special. Like Kurt Lawrence and his and his and his footwork, for example. You know, mm. you've got your you know, Kanye Am versus Jesse Quill. You know, one who's just a ridiculously good defender, the other one that can throw the the wild off flow and, and and also very good good um on the attack. But look at Billy LaRue, you know, not your best defensive um from a tackling perspective, fullback, for example, but you know, plays as a second playmaker and 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 you know assist tries for fun. So they love a player that's got a yeah. slight point of difference, and I think he does. I think he's a player that's like a Grant Williams. He's you can't you can't predict yeah. what he's going to do. Expected. He's got he's got that. Uh, yeah. So I, I like the fact that he's been included. I don't think he'll probably play, but I tell you what, there are worse options. If if if, if Grant Williams is in a side and can play be a, be a number nine and a wing, why can't you have an Ahamba as a genuine ten and nine an option? No, 100%. And I mean, we saw how thin we were potentially stretched at that World Cup. Had, you know, me and Divock gotten injured, we would have been in a hell of a lot of trouble. Well, we, um, we did we did so, give after Kirk minutes at 10 <laughs> in the World Cup. True, true. But I think point being, like, is he even third in line in that jersey for, for the string box, you know? But, I mean, to, to touch on the Diamani situation, I completely agree with if we think of the best or the most impactful player that everyone mm. speaks of in the spring box it's Quaker Smith and it's because people you don't see other Quaker Smiths there's no one like him yeah they I wouldn't they're not that not that they're like for like players but you, you spoke about that X impact you know the Grant Williams just you don't see that rapid burst of pace from anyone else we're going to include him because he can just flip a game on its head mm. why not get um, Diamani in. He can play anywhere but around the back trio. He is as physical as anyone. Good, maybe could be better defensively, but with ball in hand, he is stupid good. He, but why aren't why aren't they saying, right, Achiever, love your work. This is why this is why you're not going to make the final squad right now. Well, we you know, don't know is, that they could have said that. No, but why not? Let's say, but why is he not part of an alignment squad? Why is he not sitting there being told in oh, front right, of everyone, right, guys, to be a loose forward, this is kind of where we want stuff like that. And then he knows because he even said a couple of months ago, he said, you know, he's he's you know he's he's decided that he needs to you know he needs to be better in the in the close quarters. You know, he wants to get more involved with, yeah. with rucking and and the physical part of you because he yeah. believes that's what's you mm -hmm. know that's why he's not been selected. That's probably exactly why he's not been selected. So. I'm surprised yeah. they not included him and brought him in and said, all right, cool, this is what you need to do. And if he goes back and he doesn't yeah. do that, you don't select him, fair enough. But I don't understand why you can't look at a player who's just banging every possible door down and yeah. and 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 doesn't get get included. I, I just That one for me is, was, was a big surprise because I just don't see why. He's still so young as well. Got as many years ahead of him. It, it's not yeah. worth including him no, in, in true, potential plans. If, you, if you're looking at like the... Um, kind of forwards that they brought up, they all are very physical in nature. Murat, massive. Yeah. Ruben Van Heerden, massive. Um, Pilo Gamede, for Pilo example. Gamede, been, was, was a player six months ago, and now he's in the carrier. alarming camp. Ruben Fenter from the Lions. Yeah, exactly. But, but these are massive. You know, they're, they're big boy. They're, they're very physically imposing on the field. So that's clearly what they're going for um, within that position. And you hope that at least he was communicated with um, on a one-to-one -one basis um, about that. But Stevie, let's get into um, the Six Nations, which is happening this weekend, not any alignment camps. That is happening this weekend. And we've got um, Ireland hosting Wales. We've got Scotland um, hosting England and Mauritius in the Calcutta Cup. And France hosting Italy. Um well, yeah. What what are your thoughts on this weekend? Is the is the Six Nations dead already? Have Ireland already won it? Could Wales, having announced their squad, could they stage another you know close game, or is it is it a is it a bit of a walkover at this point? Well, it all comes down to Scotland and England game. England win it, and all of a sudden the Six Nations could be up for grabs if England were to unlikely beat Ireland. Um, but. They've it's going to be the, yeah, that's, to that's come the game of the weekend. Hosting. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And not not only not only that, but I believe it's the first time. Like it will be sixty something years 
for them to um, win it the Kolkata Cup three times on the bounce? I think um, they've won it like four in the last five. It's like their their recent record from the Kolkata about the Kolkata Cup is, is ridiculous. They've they've had this number for a while. And and to be fair, I do think Scotland should win. I think they've shown, although losing to France, I think they've shown more conviction in even in that loss and mm-hmm. in the game against Wales. You know, both kind of game of two halves to an extent where they can be so good and then just not show the maturity to close out games. But I really think England have been poor and I, I think that I think they will take them at home. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, I, I, it, well, yeah, no, I think, we'll, I, I think, we'll, we'll I, I, I think Scotland gets, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get the predictions. predictions. Yeah, I think we'll Ireland Wales, I think, will be but, quite straightforward. And I think France, Italy will probably be quite, quite straightforward as well, Um, to be honest. I think as well. Your boys, Italy, no, no, no fight back. I think they'll score some points, but um, I think what we've seen is I think that they're going to take quite a while to get used to playing under a new coach and a new system. And I think the Six Nations will be a very much a, a growing phase. I'll be very keen to see what they look like at the end of the year in that Autumn Nation series where they've got um, only home games, for example, and they can bring teams to their environment and, and hopefully make things a bit uncomfortable for, for them. But I don't think they'll, they'll compete much in the next few weeks. Yeah, hopefully I'm wrong. Uh, it is... It is I mean, that that Wales Italy game is going to be. I yeah, it's the last game of the, the season, season, as always. <laughs> it's going to be that. Classic, that'll be the one. That if, if they are to target one, then that'll be it, obviously. Yeah, and and they're fully capable of doing it. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the, I think this French team, it, it, they're not. They don't look like they're really up for winning a Six Nations because uh, I think they still have that World Cup hangover. But they are more than capable, I think, of, of dismissing the team, especially at home. Um, so yeah, ex- exciting week. As you said, in, in a way, you kind of um, you want the Six Nations to still be alive. So you want England to win. But mm. saying that out loud does not feel right. So, right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, but we'll get to that, um, that prediction at the end of the show. Stevie, let's move on to some cricket. So the Pro Tiers finishing out their series, unfortunately losing a 2-0, as we mentioned earlier. Player of the series, Kane Williamson. Player of the match was Willow Rourke. Um, for you, um, I mean, first of all, let's just cover the match. It was great to see it go 8 to day 4. Most test mm-hmm. cricket we've seen in I don't know how long in consecutive days. Um, but a couple standout performers, uh, most notably, I think, Rowan de Swart and, and obviously, I think, Bellingham netting down a spot, but obviously, Dane Pete also turning the arm over, um, taking eight wickets in the match. Yeah, look, uh, we always, we always, we, 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 if you've been following cricket domestically for a while, you would know that David Bellingham is a, is a test player and he's been a test player already in the wait for, for a while now. Um, he looked a test player in his first innings against India, to be fair. And he looked a yeah. test player with a with a magnificent hundred um, in this in this test, uh, 110, balanced it quite nicely with you know I wasn't a slow 100, 110 of you know striking at 78, so he had quite, but he, he kind of just, he combined that sort of uh, test mentality while still trying to look to score and stuff. I think that's what I really like about him is he doesn't get bogged down, you know he's got a, he's got a good technique, but he's got. Like Kane Williamson, Kane Williamson will never get bogged down. He he knows as soon as he's a little bit of pressure, yeah. he knows how to just find that run or two and stuff like that. He can absorb pressure if he wants to, but he also has got those scoring areas that he can just just turn to. And I, mean, I think that's that's what makes a good test. They were trying to bounce him out of the game. They were mm. trying to bounce him out of the game, and he was just absolutely clobbering them, almost doing a little Stuart Broad where he just opens the front leg a little bit and just pulling it, heading it like a tennis shot. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I agree though. I mean, he he's definitely he makes the he, he's going to be in the the approaches set up for for the next couple of years. Who out of the players that were uncapped do you think we see in a approaches um, jersey again? again? Uh, I think Ruan Swat hasn't get, done himself any harm. You know, I think that fifty in the in that in that first uh, first innings, I think it was a fighting fifty. Uh, I think that uh, he took a few wickets. I think he's twenty six years old, so he's now coming into the, the important times of his of his career. Um, so I think that he's probably for me the most likely of the uncapped players you might see again. 
Maybe mm. Neil Brandt, but I, I just don't think he scored any runs. He, as an opening batsman, you know that was the runs. He even said himself, he said runs are his currency, and he didn't uh, contribute enough uh, with that. Two yep. starts as well, so it was quite frustrating because he didn't look out of out of. Uh, um, out he of looked depth. solid when he was in. Yeah, uh, I think Rana Fontana for me is probably the big disappointment, as well as Zabaya Hamza. Because I think I, I generally think Zabaya Hamza is a, a test player. I think he's good enough. Um, you know, in his first yeah. first series back after not having played for a year, and he's top of the run charts for the four day domestic series, banging hundreds for fun. Um, so I was frustrated with things. I thought that he was going to be he and betting him were the two big ones that I was kind of depending on mm. uh, to to try and score score runs, and he didn't really yeah. come good. There's certain players that I find I, I see in the jersey and it feels like it weighs them down. Certain players that come to mind, Keegan Peterson, I yeah. think Hamza, even like Rassi van der Dissen, he just never like could feel like he had control. If you watch a betting him innings, he has so much control um, over his craft. And I just feel there's that nervousness. I mean, just the, the release shot, both, I think, Peterson and, and Hamza during the series got, got a city shot. Mm. A lot of, all of I out. think that was probably the most strange thing about the entire innings, that we did not make them work hard enough for their wickets. That's a big learning yeah. curve. I mean, a massive, massive headache if you're a coach. And, I mean, you know, so many people getting into 20s and 30s, um, you have to have people kick on you have to have at least uh, one person going to get a hundred and we saw that in in the one um you know in, in the second innings from betting him but otherwise no one really standing up we have to remember it's a you know this is like our third team like we can't expect them to be unreal but there are players there that have that mm. should be that could be test players and and, and have the talent to be test, be test players, players. Mm. exactly so uh, yeah i think agreed to swat i mean w- Shuki Conrad, you know, it's so clear that he wants an all-rounder. He, mm. You know, like kind of, you know, probably not that dissimilar to Vian Mulder in that hasn't got a lot of pace. Vian Mulder, I find, almost never bowls. We've seen now batting performances from him in the SA20. I'll tell you what, he good. could be making a case for himself as a flip and pure batsman at the way he's going. And off, off the SA20 form, comes straight into the four-day series and bangs 100. So... Yeah, are you so you still picking Vian Mulder as your all rounder mm. if you if you're picking that 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 extra a batting um, orientated one? I, I still think he's. I I'm a big Vian Mulder fan. I I there for me there's a world class player in there, and the right coach is gonna give, is gonna bring it out of him eventually. I'm hoping that this SA twenty could be a turning point because they gave him the responsibility and he and he stood to the occasion. I mean he bailed it. I mean, he bailed out um, Durban throughout yeah. the tournament so often. Um, yeah. he, 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 that was the nice thing. He played pressure innings throughout the tournament and, and rose to the occasion every single time. Um, yeah. And he's, he's just too good for me. He's just You know, you just watch the cricket and you just look at him and you think this guy is too good not to succeed. And it's frustrating me that he hasn't. But I mean, everything. I mean, I think his bowling is... I don't think he bowls enough these days to really be... to 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 be able to hone in this craft. But I look at him with the bats and I see a batsman there. He's phenomenal in the field. I mean, the kid was playing his like second test and he was building a first slip because he's so yeah. good in the slips. So there's a, there's a cricketer there. But this again, I bring it back to look how, look how that Proteus shirt wears in it. You can see how nervous he is. Yeah. And and it can take one innings. Obviously, it's often it, it can be that there is that is a breakthrough season and maybe this is his season. I do think it might be his last shot, to be fair. Um and he's taking the the best way of doing it is taking you know your form from the domestic scene into it. So I do think for me it's his last shot. He's showing good form, but if he he can't be debilitated by the pressure yeah. because I, I that, think at the end of the day is exactly what Test cricket is about. Yeah, I, th- I think it's two things. You know, I think it's it's he needs that one really but I think he needs the environment as well. You know, as I said, I, I always keep saying, I said, you know, the right coach is going to get him right eventually. You know, and I think certain coaches have done that with players, where they've managed to create an environment where certain players can thrive. What I want to see with him is if this is going to be his last go, which is fine. We actually play a reasonable amount of test cricket at the end of the year. I think we've got three series, also what was back to back. So if you're going to back him as your all rounder, back I'm him really. as your all rounder and say, right, Fian, you've got six tests basically you know i i believe that you are exactly what we need i'm going to give you i'm going to give you the backing we're going to back you we're going to play you in the right position we're going to give you all the opportunity but now then you need to come back and and, and give us results and if they do that and it fails it fails but if, i think if i think there are certain players that if they get the right back and they get the right run of games they can they can build themselves yeah. into into really good players listen there are certain players that 
earn a right like Markram, I feel, to because you can see mm. what is laying beneath the surface to get that extra chance. Um, and that's paying off for the Proteas and what he's bringing to South African cricket in all three formats. Um, I'm still not convinced that Vian Wilder has that type, that, the, the same ceiling as him. But there's really just the real issue is that there's no one rivaling him. There's no other, there's no real all rounder competition. Mm. Um, We've been desperate for a batting all rounder since Carlos left. And this is, and, oh, this, and that mean, was the problem is that this kid starts playing cricket at 19 years old as a batting all rounder, scores his scores first class century before he's 20. And what are they going to do? Oh, cool. He has the next colors. What has happened to Brevis? Oh, here's the next AB. And we go and we yeah. murder these poor kids' chances of success by telling them how phenomenal they are at a young age. And these sort of these prod- prodigies get pushed through and then don't fail. Marco Janssen's completely opposite, wasn't necessarily a prodigy, sort of came through just simply because he was playing so well at a, at a, at not an, at, a, at a 19, for example, but he's still young and he's just managed to just take step. I mean, he's, I think we've all been surprised at how big his threshold is, is has become. Um, but it's amazing how different his journey has been to mm-hmm. your Vian Mulders, you know, a, a brevis less to the States because yeah. he hasn't been pushed to the international side just yet, but the, the pressure yeah. that we put on these kids. I do think that the SA 20 is actually going to do a, a lot mm. of good for that because you can't replicate a full stadium with the game on the line like and largely for people who are, and, and i know not a lot not necessarily for example betting him doesn't play a lot of um test cricket hamza is not in the sa20 but there are people who are transferring across and will play both almost all bowlers will will play t20 and and test cricket um and that pressure will slowly kind of coach these young and who are otherwise generally playing in empty stadiums um mm. just domestically with no more pressure than the selection um and you know their c- careers but you know bringing it onto the field and i think that's where test cricket yeah. is the big differential is what can you do when every when all eyes are on you right now and you know you, you're away in india <laughs> can you well, can you well, take the heat? Here we go. Let's talk about the heat. Baz Ball and the savior of Test cricket. Look, I don't want to be that guy that wants to just jump on the bad wagon hoping they fail, but it, they make it really difficult, don't they? When Robertson comes out and says, you know, we are doing this to save Test cricket, and you know they 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 they, they lost the first Test by twenty eight. Um, Sorry, um, won the first won test, the first. then lost by 106, and then lost by 434 runs. I mean, it's yeah. I, listen, the, the English can take their like Vanity Fair elsewhere. I still maintain I love the idea of baseball, and at its core, in that it's a um, it's a winning focused and a very positive mindset it's result, result driven that's the thing the big thing it's result driven either way exactly. you know they're, they're, they're basically saying yeah. they're not going to play five days and have a draw you know there will be a result exactly. and they'll always go for the results so the principle is exactly. there but i think that they've compromised a lot of results in not getting the balance I, right so it's a very interesting it's, case it's, study it's, to what it's going to do to test cricket it's a it's a hard tap to switch off because to go to India, you kind of you. There are times you're not going to dominate them over f- five days by, um, you know, every, in every single session. So it's almost about picking your moments and you're seeing the likes of Joe Root. I think he went out for its eighth time trying to reverse scoop, and yes, it's a massive run scoring opportunity. But he hasn't really scored that many runs this series. But he's in a so, very big, big rut. Uh, uh, like is that your go-to shot where are the basics like you can stop pointing out those things when it's mm. not going right for you on the other hand you have ben duckett who's uh, who just doesn't leave has never left the ball in his life and goes yeah. 153 i think it's it's such a it's such a model that's built on individual like brilliance like no yeah, longer is it 100 how many 150s and 200s have we seen from this england team because they only they want just one or two of them to step up i mean from that, batting that, perspective that call is almost going to go down looking like a genuine test opener at this rate 
because he he's afforded to like you know go six innings with nothing on the top, but then he might score two hundred. Yeah. Of like. They basically said we know we understand that you don't actually have a test technique and that you're not actually going to be a test opener unless we go and tell you just go and blip and try and smash it around because you might flick your way to a hundred. And he has, he has. Yeah, a two hundred as well. Um, but yeah, I think I mean I said this after England won their first test. I think India win the series um, for one. I still think they will. Um, mm. Even um, mentioned off air without without Burma, um, they, you know, um, I think they they they're too strong in India. Um, you know who impressed me and who's deserved every single. Um, or n- no, no one deserves a debut more than his Safras. I mean, I remember him bursting yeah. into the IPL scene when he was like a teenager, and he was playing with like Chris Gale. He has been working. Have you at that. seen and the his, way he his first class stats? England, outrageous, outrageous. But I mean, did you see the run out with the danger? Yeah. I mean. <laughs> I mean, Jadeja is actually my, he's my, probably my favorite cricketer um, outside of South Africa. I just, I don't yeah. know, I think he's saying just the numbers that he turns out are ridiculous. Um, but, I mean, he's obviously got his little, you know, sword 12 that he does after scoring 100. Running out Safras, giving him a yes, no, go back. Safras out looking and is finally making his test debut. Mm-hmm. Probably going to close it on 100. And then the very next ball just clips one down to fine leg for a single to knock up 100. I mean, I've never seen a, a more um, kind of just lapidated look on his face as he did his, you know, little sword twirl and celebration. It's like the part of Orc Eternal mode, like, mm, kind of have to do this donut, but it's a bit of Orcs. Yeah. And that's good. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, very, very impressed with, with Safras. He's going to be there for, for a long time. And, and I mean, having waited that long to make his debut, like made the most of, of both innings. Yeah, well, he only had to average uh, 70 in his first-class career and uh, 1,400s to get one. So <laughs> hopefully he does stay in the team for a while. Um, but, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I think we both pretty agree in, in that, that I don't think England will really – maybe they do compete, but I think if they were to – if they are to compete come Friday, I think we need to see the real Joe Root. And I mean that in two ways. Obviously, we need to see what he can do. But I'd like to see him – he knows his game. You know, and this is what yeah. I like the concept. He's successful pre baseball. Yes, exactly. He, you know, where, where, where you could go and sit there and say, oh, you know, they, they got hammered in the ashes a few times. They've been a bad test team for a while. He was always the shining light. He was always the exception. It was always, well, this test team is pretty poor. You know, Anderson and Brewer can still give us a lot. But, you know, uh, but he was always the constant. And I, 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 I don't think he has to. I think he needs to understand that whilst, you know, he can be a bit more aggressive, you're a test player with almost 12,000 test runs. You've got an average of 50. You've scored 50 hundreds in your career. You know what to do, you know. So let, let Stokes and the Buggers bat the way they want to bat. But you are now run, Baron. Go out and play a Joe Root innings. And, and he was never someone who was particularly conservative. You know, he loved a good cover drive and a, and a decent straight. He's, I mean, he's, he's probably the best batsman England have ever produced. You know, so he doesn't need yeah. to be playing reverse laps and sweeps and and these things. You know, he got there by playing reasonable cricket shots and being measured. Why not go out, be measured, play some decent cricket shots and earn the right to play a lap and a reverse yeah. and, and things? Yeah, I, I, think, I think that's it. I think, you know, it's clearly a way that he's been getting out a lot. He's good enough to do it without it, get yourself in a position, not when you're in your teens still, um, mm. you know, to, 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 to try that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's just, there's a bit too much reliance on a freak of nature to, to come right from a batting performance, like massive, two massive knocks, um, particularly just for the depth of this India team. Um, in India, it's really, really hard to mm. compete with. Um, but let's move on to uh, briefly move on to a bit of Premier League football. Stevie, United getting a win away to Villa. That that was um, something hard to predict. What you know? Uh, what? Um... All my all my talking nonsense. 
you talking about Man United? Sorry, but I said, sorry, I said, I said, but I mean, Luton. I mean, I meant Luton. Sorry, no, we beat Luton. Um, but United on a bit of on a, on a, oh, a, 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 on a bit of a spree. We've actually okay. only lost. I don't think we've lost a game in twenty twenty four. Um, Premier League wise, we actually are on a bit of a run here. Uh, we're not. We've actually been horrendous. Like we've looked like a horrendously pub football team. But ironically, we are on a little bit of a run. <laughs> also, also, like to be fair, because if you if you look at your <laughs> if you look at your goal difference, it's. I think it became positive for the first time. Um, this <laughs> this game week, but yeah, yeah. Well, you, we, yeah, you know, you're sitting, you're sitting pretty there in sixth, somehow, way, shape, or form. I mean, the rest of the competitions have been a bit of a throwaway, but I mean, fair play to Hoyland, he can't get off the score sheet. Um, Youngest player point, ever, yeah. by the way, to score six uh, consecutive uh, goals, beating uh, Joe Willock and Erling Holland. Oh, really? Up the Rasmus, yeah. Rasmus, is that from his first goal? Yeah. Has he not <laughs> scoring since he no, scored he his first goal? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Talk about a kind of hot and cold. But um, in in other fixtures, I mean, Arsenal have been looking ridiculous. They've been blowing away uh, opponents um, left, right, and centre. You know, first of all, obviously, um, at six 0 win um last weekend to west ham and then again five nil this weekend um beating yeah. Burnley. are they genuine t- title contenders no i agree and i want <laughs> to think so but i don't believe it like they're kind of not going away now i, I thought uh, well, i don't know See, the problem is you know for, so for example they're playing against porter tomorrow night in the champions league so that could very well end badly um, yeah. You don't you don't yeah. want to go and play Porto in Portugal, um, and, and I genuinely think that they've, there's an employee. Have you seen their fixtures? So they've got they've They're got hot. they've got Newcastle this weekend, um, then Sheffield and Brentford. Okay, cool, fine. They're then going back to back as uh, Chelsea and City. So yeah, it's, it's, and City and City are doing what City does. You know where they're starting well, to. They're, they're got to go hold. We'll talk about well, that. But well, it's, um, let's get into that because they were on the verge of of losing. Of going, of, home, uh, yeah, and and they were on the verge of, and that was the opportunity to, to actually, if they had won that game, um, they would have got up to fifty six points. They would have been ahead of Arsenal, and they would have then been able to have gone ahead of Liverpool tonight and with the with the extra game in hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so, I mean, it's. It's the, what I mean to be. I've never been so much of a Chelsea fan um, until this last weekend. That was I. Was I screaming for for Chelsea to defend? I mean, they they definitely deserved to get their one goal back. Um, but Chelsea just are the most. I cannot remember a more unpredictable team than yeah. this. Like the fact that they've got two. I mean, a very an, a treble winning City team. But then one of the worst Chelsea teams that we've seen in years now gets just two pops draws up and draws them. Yeah. And it's an interesting one with with regards to what you do with Pochettino because, you know, yeah. you've on, gone from on numbers wise, it's horrible. Yeah, you look it's at you look at the good. table and you sit there saying, Well, how can you back him? He's tenth. And you look at certain games, you're going, hmm, and he's there. And and my biggest problem is that they brought in Pochettino after buying all these players and said, Well, here's this billion pound squad, make it work. And um, I don't think I, the reason I think you keep Pochettino is similar to United and Eric Ten Hag. You can sack the guy, but I don't think the next guy is going to do any better. No, no. And to be fair, this time or in two weeks' time, we could be speaking about them being having won the first trophy of the season. Yeah. You know? And and so the, he's been doing the, the Premier League. There have been a, a lot of slip ups, but to be fair, he. I don't think he's that phased about top six, like even getting Europa, maybe keeping a couple of players, but they're all young. I don't see anyone leaving if they don't make top six. And also, like, I think generally, we've seen this with Arsenal, not getting Europe or conference or anything is so good, especially if you're going through a rebuild. If you go into next season going, right, boys, this is, this is Premier League season now. You know, this is the season we get back into being part of the European elite and you play once yeah. a week, the basically. Last, the last thing they want is is the conference league. No, you don't want conference league. You don't want Europa. 
You don't want to play in the Thursday. You don't want Thursday night football. You Champions League or nothing. That's why when United went out of the Champions League, I was like, well, at least we're out, out. We're not going down to the Europa to go and go off to Azerbaijan and, and crap yeah. like that. Like, you know, no, no, no. We're going out, we're going out. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. That's where I'm at with Liverpool. Thursday nights so, are uh, me and the boys. Um, yeah, n- not fun. No, it's kind of playing, playing with um, teams. It's, it's heating up. We have, I mean, we have a we have a three way battle. 54, 55, 57, um, or to, or fifty four is as it stands tonight. If City win, they will that'll take them um, to um, fifty six. So in which case it'll be fifty five, fifty six, fifty seven. Mm. Um, all twenty five games played. So, I mean, hard to complain as a as a general fan. Um, yeah. But Stevie, let's get into the predictions for this weekend. And since we're on the topic, let's start with um, a big one, which is Arsenal Newcastle. Newcastle kind of starting to show a bit of form after a tough Jan period. Um, probably the first time people started questioning Eddie Howe. But versus yeah, an they Arsenal, they're coming off a draw one. against Bournemouth at home, though. So not. They, True. They've had a weird. They've actually had a very weird. Uh, I mean, they had that four-four draw against Luton, which was mental. Um, Three-two against uh, Forest. Three-one against Villa. Uh, Three-two against City, where they actually look pretty competitive. They've had a very. It's a strange team to predict because you know it's it's a bit like the Lions, I suppose, where they pick up when they pitch up. You know, they can go toe-to-toe with the best of them, but yeah. they're also beatable. You know. Um, yeah. So it's at it's at the it's at the Emirates. I don't see Arsenal losing, but maybe a draw could be on the cards if Newcastle rock up and uh, and 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 can get the business done. Um, they were quite a nice so run ahead of them actually. So this would be a bit if they could beat uh, Arsenal, then Chelsea the only real big game they've got until um, Spurs and United, which is in April. So it'd be an opportunity for them to really get a bit of a second go going for for after after the season. Uh, for the basic of the seasons, if they can if they can get a result on Saturday, which I think a draw would be a decent result for them. Okay, so is that your prediction then? Uh, no, I want to go an Arsenal no. two one. <laughs> no, you, you you're two, on the one. board now. If okay. I was three 0 up, I could do some wild things. But now you're on the board and behind me, so I have to be the responsible. <laughs> yeah, so I'll you take did, the first you prediction. Dismissed me. You dismissed me and, and went for. Uh, uh, Proteus draw having not played a game of a day five game of cricket in ten years likely, um, so I appreciate the the um, you know the, the the kind gesture, but now I, I fully intend on coming back. I'm going to go. Have you gone two one? Two one. I'm going two one. I'll go three one. And no, I don't case. think it's and, bad as and, uh, Arsenal scoring goals, but I just kind of feel that sometimes when you have those many that many like high scoring games, you're bound to then. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. unsustainable. I think they've just been Newcastle have been a bit fragile in defence, and the sucker has been look and Odegaard have been looking so good. Even Martinelli's looking solid. Um, yeah, so three one um, and two one, Steve. And for clarity, um, the closest to the result. So if it were to be a draw, or so I'm, a, take, I'm taking the point, win, that would be that would be your point. Exactly. Okay. okay, there we go. Um, Next president. We have a bit of a tricky one. Now we have India versus um, England in the fourth test. We don't know who's going to be batting or bowling first. <laughs> yeah, so, so we might have to wild thing to try and predict. Let's let's just go. Let, let's go. Let's go runs. I think we have to kind of go both, don't we? I think I believe we're both going India victory. Yeah, we're both going India victory. So should we do a runs or a wickets prediction, and then we can obviously make it. Okay, okay, I, I'll start because you went first on the last one. I'm going actually under. I'm going. <laughs> I can't go under a new given number. Um, I'm going to go 170 run wicket, um, run win. Sorry, or a seven wicket victory for India. Okay, so I'll go with a six wicket. 170 run and, and, or seven wicket. Okay, I'll go with six wickets because I was going to go with seven, so that's probably the best best case scenario. Uh, and I'm going to go with a 200 win run. I think it'll be plus 200. So the fact that you're 170 means yeah. I can go a bit, bit less. I was going to go 250, so I'll go with a 200 win run win. Okay, and then the final game of the weekend. We've got um, the Kolkata Cup, Scotland, England. Stevie. <laughs> Take us away. Scotland by 10. I think Scotland finally by rock 10. up. 10. I think they see England out, and I think Finn Russell takes Ooh. this game very personally, and he pulls out a man of the match performance and dusts them. 
I mean, he's he's due a a man of the match performance. Kind of hasn't played the full eighty quite yet. Plays. And I also think that I also think that proper pissed off after being schnived against France. So I think there's a lot that they want to go out and prove this week. Yeah, and 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 the wise words of of Rian. Um, I don't know what Scotland did to the universe, but it fucking hates them. Yeah, no, <laughs> unreal, unreal. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Scotland um, by four. Um, I think they. I think they just um, edge the palms um, in that battle, um, and which would make the Six Nations officially dead, um, unless there is an absolute miracle um, in the Wales game, which would yeah. be. Um, phenomenal um but that brings us to the end of the show thank you so much stevie episode five done and dusted between two fans um yeah. a whole lot to get about probably waffled on for a little bit too long but that's what we're here to do is speak about Carried. sport and and give us opinions that are you know non-professional not always warranted but just what we believe to be true yeah, and as you can see by the predictions, clearly not particularly true. But anyway, um, you know, isn't that the whole point? So um, speak to yourself. Uh, wow, wow! Gets into the board once, and now he's now he's now he reckons he's uh, the, the next big pundit over here. He's gonna start giving sports betting advice next next week. <laughs> I'll leave I'll leave that to to Crow um, tips. Yeah, right. Well, Scotty, thank you very much. As always, a pleasure. Uh, and for everybody uh, listening or watching, uh, if you're watching, then obviously you know where to watch. If you are not, uh, then you can listen to this on Spotify, officially, uh, Apple Music, um, Amazon Music, as well as several other streaming platforms. So whatever you listen to your music and your podcasts on, we're on that at uh, Between Two Fans. And uh, yeah. Uh, Scolsi, uh, do you want to plug a Twitter? Where, 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 where do you follow you on Twitter now? Where do you where do you throw your your radical opinions out there on? Um, I should probably find out exactly what my handle is, but if you find me at Daniel Scolsi, you, you'll you'll be able to see yes. some rule number um, one in, influencer one hundred and one. You don't even know the Twitter handle, you know. Yeah, I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it. Yeah, well, you can find me on CVP Sports on uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, <laughs> uh, Twitter, and. Uh, <laughs> See, you got to know. The standardizes across all platforms. That's what I did. <laughs> it makes life a lot easier. Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Yeah, okay. Between well, there two we go. fans, not influencers. Yeah, true. True. Right. So, you have a great week. We'll see you guys all next week. Uh, please, as I said, do uh, subscribe or follow us. For anyone, if you listen to this, really do appreciate the support. Let us know any uh, suggestions or topics you'd like us to discuss. Leave them in the comments. And we will see you guys all in a week's time. Thank you, Scorsi. Have a good week. And uh, to everybody else, see you soon. Thanks, Stevie.